whatever you want to say. I don't okay, care. Yeah. So, all of the above. Okay. Which camera am I starting at? You're single. Single? Hi, it's Diane Munoz, and welcome back to the Unleash Your Sexy Podcast live. Woo! I hope everyone's really excited. I actually did promotions this week for our <laughs> podcast. What you're learning is we're live, so we are going to make mistakes as we go. We're going to have a great time. My special guest today is Derek Pierce. What's up? And the crowd goes wild. <sighs> they do. You know, you promoted this thing all week, and I had one of your fans tell me that I should back out of the show. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Uh, Mark Romero. It was, it was like a low-key threat. <laughs> wait, wait. No. Like, if you know what's good for you, homie, you probably won't go on this show. And I was like, who is this dude trying to tell me to back out of the show? my address. <laughs> no. Was- I have a I have a constant fan. Uh-huh. And his name is Mark underscore I think I Romero. Think that's him, yeah. Yes, and anyone I follow, <laughs> anyone. I think Daisy the other day even was like, um, "Girl, like, is you dating this person? Like, why is he telling me <laughs> off?" And I was like, "I don't know the motherfucker." And especially the worst is when I'm dating somebody, because when you're dating somebody, they're looking at you like, "Oh yeah, right. Like, I'm sure you're smashing that." Really? Come on, I'm not sloppy. <laughs> I'm not going to go on social media. But yeah, he's always telling everyone he's my girlfriend and he's a, I'm his girlfriend and he's in love with me and stay away from her. You know, you know, don't shoot with her. Da, 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 da. Yeah. He, he seemed a little slow and slightly remedial. As most men I know. Wow. You know a <laughs> lot of men. I do know a few men. No, <laughs> a, yeah. a couple. <laughs> Okay, I want to just thank you so much, and it's such an honor to have you here. Thank you for taking the time out of your schedule. I know how busy you are, wow. and I'm, I'm, I'm very privileged to have you here, so thank you so much for coming. And normally, and, I'd be gracious, but I sat in an hour and 15 minutes of traffic downtown L.A. Anybody who lives in L.A. knows that coming downtown L.A., it might as well be another damn state. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Like, you can't even date somebody that lives on the west side if you're in the <laughs> valley. You don't, because that, where, that's first so off, true. where am I going to park? Where am I parking? I'm not, I'm not, if you live on the west side and you don't have assigned parking, we're not going to work out. No, it's true. Because in the morning, especially, it's like 6 a.m., the parking tents are right there. Boom. Parking yeah, ticket. I'm not having Kitten. it. Parking not ticket. having it. And then here in downtown LA, there is parking zero places. No, none. You know what they do out here? Scooters. Yeah, I know. I saw the electric scooters everywhere. Scooters. Can you imagine some dude taking you on a date and pick you up on electric scooter? I don't, as long as they pay for the date, I'm good on <laughs> this electric scooter. So he was like, I got you one too, swipe the credit card, let's roll? I'm cool with that. I can possibly handle that for downtown. Literally downtown. Because honestly, like even valet parking, like I don't even know. I don't think half the places here, down here even have valet parking. Well, parking in this building was a bitch. Mm-hmm. I can't get my car in the driveway. <gasps> it's too low. Which is why I can't. Which car did you bring? My charger. But it's lowered. But that's why I can't mess with somebody on the west side because I'm I not agree. parking my car on but the street. That's it. If you guys, if you ladies are from the west side, that's it. You're extra his life. Now, if you want to come to the valley and get broke off, we can do that. But <laughs> Oh, yeah. And his bedroom is pimped out. It's beautiful. His house is beautiful. It's Interesting comfortable. Interesting what you remember. Yeah. His house yeah. is comfortable. Beautiful. It's, he has camera. Like <laughs> I have cameras. I have cameras. Now I seem like a pervert. <laughs> I'm trying to. For, I have random cameras all working, over my bedroom for wait, no reason. Working versus. <laughs> Girl, don't worry about those cameras. Him. That red light is for ambiance. So no, but your bedroom is like he's. It's decorated. He has. Uh, it's beautifully painted. What she's paintings. trying to say is, like my, he has swag. My my bedroom is. I have a lavender wall, okay? That's <laughs> yes. what she's really trying to say is. I Can have we a say lavender swag? Wall. What, is, what is, Jazzy, what is the new word that people use nowadays? Swag? No, um, what did I say? Just like dope. <laughs> when I say dope, she gets so mad when I say dope. She's like, Mom, who right. says dope? I'm we like, do. I don't know. What do you guys. We do. Like, Actually, what, she's the odd like, one out because we all <laughs> understood what dope means. <laughs> So we don't know what the hell is wrong with you, Jess. Because she's 21 and under. <laughs> <laughs> right? What is, like, if you don't know who the Thundercats are. I know the Thundercats. I have a Thundercat hoodie. <laughs> I do. do it's really a green hoodie with a red Thundercat. Uh, yeah. Okay, who knows the Thundercats in this room? Raise your hands. 
Yeah, we all know. Oh, no, no well, Three shut up, you liar. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just raise he my hand. He was like, oh, maybe no, did. maybe not. I don't know. I'm not really sure. What the hell is a Thundercat? <laughs> Thundercats unite. I don't know, but I love, I love Thundercats. Okay, so let's get to the topic because you and I, we've been Wait, here. Wait, I think you were introducing me. I just went on a rant about, <laughs> about um, being downtown. I'm sorry. Yes. That was my bad. And then we got into your bedroom, to the lights, the red lights. Okay. You, you have me on because, uh, well, we have history. And you also have me on because I've written a book on dating. Yes. I think that's why you had me on. Either that or nobody else was fucking available and I was down the list <laughs> at like number nine. I don't know. Actually, you know what? If he makes another menopause joke, I'm going to refer to that for the rest of the show. I, I only made one and I said slightly <laughs> menopausal. And then my daughter made a menopause joke. Somebody's <laughs> and then my producer sensitive. made a menopause joke. I think I want to hear the word menopause one more time in this room. You know, Everyone's walking you know, home. You know, hypersensitivity is also another sign of menopause. <laughs> I'm, just, you know I'm just throwing it out there. Okay, so <laughs> everyone knows we are on YouTube Live, so everything has to be very censored. Yes. <laughs> so things I can't say right now will be said at our after hours. After this, make sure you are logged into my Patreon. If you're not a member of my VIP fan club, log in. We're going to be having an after hours where we will be talking about all the stuff that we can't discuss here. So we're PG for the next 30, 40 minutes right now. And we are going to be discussing the topic of, dun da da da, drum roll please. Every question that every woman has out there, what are your top turn offs? Is that really what women want to know? Or oh no, I don't think women. Hell give a yes, shit. I don't yes think they, they do. Are you we, kidding me? No, I'm just making. Oh my a, gosh. An observation. I don't think they care. Hence what our why you're are. a man. Hence why I'm a woman. Yeah, I, I believe you. I'm just saying I don't think most <laughs> women care what my turnoffs are. They do. Okay, fair they enough. They do. You know what it is? Is you're alpha, so you probably attract very alpha females who act like they don't care because they don't want to catch feelings. Are you speaking from experience. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not speaking from experience on that one. Mm, okay. Turnoffs, is that what we're yes. jumping into? Yes, so turn-offs? women, okay, women and I, we're always sitting and talking. Okay. And we're always talking about, oh my God, what we hate about men, things that we hate. So I'm always talking with women now, as the fact is, because you are working with men, correct? I'm oh yeah, oh. Working that's so, that, with men, that could be an awkward <laughs> statement considering my line of, 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 of career choice. Okay, so. Let's clarify so that a let's, little bit. So let me introduce Derek. He has written and he has the knowledge on training men how to approach women, how to communicate with women, how to get the woman that you want. And he comes from the adult industry, so he's really dealt with women of a high caliber that the average man are wishing, how in the world can I date a porn star? How in the world can I date... The Instagram model, most famous girl. How could I date this celebrity? And so we, I brought on it's good somebody. We were putting names to those things right there. <laughs> I did, of course. You not. chose very specifically. Are you That's a whole different book. <laughs> and TMZ better pay me for that one. Because <laughs> <laughs> I got my own book. <laughs> mm. So we have him here, and I thought, well, who better to debate with me? Because <laughs> God knows we love debating each other. <laughs> we do. Um, I, what? I, I wrote a book yeah. called The Bad Boy's Guide to Being a Good Man. Oh, and love it. So it's volume one. I have seven, seven volumes. I split it up because uh, in today's day and age of young people who don't know who the Thundercats are, <laughs> um, they live Jasmine. life in, in 140 characters Noel. or <laughs> You looked them up, didn't you? You looked them up on Google. Oh, Wait. that's a Thundercat. Can the next show I have like a camera that goes the backstage to <laughs> sitting back there? <laughs> That would be funny. Okay, note. And, note to producer. <laughs> and, and so it's seven volumes, yes. and the first volume that's out uh, basically deals with uh, interaction with women. Well, every one of them deals with interaction with women, but it's kind of like the precursor to actually meeting them. So right. a lot of people feel like the first thing that they have to do is get out there and meet, and I don't agree. I think that there's like kind of like um, prepping beforehand, you know, pre-production of sorts. Which is because you were okay. commenting on like my bedroom and things like that. And yes. I think there's a lot of things that go into 
the, the pre phases of going out to start to meet people of the opposite sex or whoever you're interested in. Right. Uh, and so I think those things need to be taken care of, like wardrobe and home decor and, you know, car oh. cleanliness and things like that, which then kind of buys into your turn offs. No, that's correct. Because like that. the number one, if for those who don't know the statistical <clears throat> facts, is you have seven seconds when you meet somebody to impress them. The first seven seconds is when people assess and judge you. I do that shit in four with three to spare. <laughs> so that's just me. So ladies, remember right now, he's gonna start telling us what men, from the minute they're gonna see us, what they're gonna judge first. Cause you have seven seconds. He hasn't talked to us yet. You don't know who I am yet. You don't know what I do yet. Mm -hmm. You might or whatever. But let's start from the minute you see a girl, boom. <sighs> Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yes. So no, back to the book. As no, well. no, no. That's fine. Uh, I, I think asking someone like me that question is not really a fair question because uh, the exposure that I have to, to women because of the business that we're in. So you just like every woman? No, I didn't say that. I'm saying it's, <laughs> it's not fair. I, to be honest with you, I don't think most men judge negatively off the bat. I think that I don't think that they assess the same way that women do. Okay. Uh, I think women have their uh, internal checklist. Uh, much more at their fingertips than a guy does. When okay. we say that girl's hot, what we really mean is she has nice tits. Um, okay. That's just how it works. And then if they don't want to talk to us, well, then fuck her. She wasn't that cute anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so perfectly. So, okay. So let's start with for you. What is the number one thing for you? For me? That's the biggest turn off with a woman. I can't stand ugly shoes. <laughs> Just talking about that I at can't, dinner. I can't Did stand you, ugly you shoes. Say it I, again. I can't stand ugly shoes. Oh. If a broad has ugly shoes <laughs> or is wearing Birkenstocks, get the fuck away from me. Don't fucking come near me. <laughs> if you got worn out tips on the heels of your shoes, don't talk to me because I'm gonna notice and I'm going to judge you adversely for having worn out. Yes. It, it, it's a oh few dollars God, to get the tips it? on the heels replaced. Like I it know, is. cause I when I was a kid, I'd take them to the to the shoe guy for my mom. She'd be like, "Go get new tips on these things." Oh wow! So what, yeah. your mom was on point, popping. Yeah. <laughs> And so for me, like shoes is a big thing. I always go to shoes, but I also have a shoe fetish. So it kind of like, you know, aligns with each other. Right. Um, I have a lot of shoes myself. So. I like this because yeah. we had dinner earlier and we were actually, this was me discuss the next one, but mm -hmm. the number one thing we were all talking literally at dinner, I just said in the first seven seconds when I meet him and the first thing I do, and then we've talked to, shoes. I've talked to Brandon about yeah. this. Check out Everyone the shoes. is, the Check first the thing I do is, do you have dirty tennis on? Now, it's one thing yeah. if you're a construction worker or you've been hiking all day, but I'm talking like on a daily basis, like you're trying to come like pick up on me, be like, whoa, whoa, what's up? I want to talk to you. Going so if I had on dirty Converse, you would be like, get the fuck away from me. Fuck yes. But that's also a style thing. You don't realize that? that I'm telling you, dirty Converse <laughs> is a trend. Okay, so my fault. Belief is, mm -hmm. if that's somebody's trend, that's somebody I would never want to date. <laughs> Fair enough. That's okay. You know, enjoy the trend. I'm, I'm with it. I but wouldn't be. Part that's of that my trend. deal with yeah. with shoes. I don't like so ugly see, shoes. I love this, <laughs> ladies. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to this, ladies. He just said, ugly shoes. Yeah, and so, I don't mean that I don't like the brand or I don't like right, the style. Exactly. That's a personal preference. Just, but I mean, like, if your shit looks tired, just taking care of. You're probably just as tired as your shoes. <laughs> Uh, that's that's just how it breaks right? down to me. No, it's um, yeah. I also don't like shoes that don't fit. If your toes are looking like they're trying to commit suicide <laughs> off the front of your shoes by jumping off, that's gonna be a problem for me because it's not your fucking size. You're not a six. I don't know what to tell you. You're not a six. You're probably a seven and a half, and you don't want to deal with the reality that you have a bigger foot than you thought you did. I'm guilty. <laughs> Get with reality. You're I'm not guilty. a six. I don't know what to no tell joke. you. No joke. I'm guilty. I'm a seven and a half, eight. Okay, okay, I'm eight. Look, like, my daughter's looking at me. I'm right, I gotta tell you. I'm an eight. No, I, I'm not eight and a half. But there was a point where I was like seven, seven and a half. So if I go buy my favorite pair of high heels and they're out of eights, I will literally buy the seven and a halves. And you know what? I'll just be like. <laughs> now, if, if they're a closed toe. I'm gonna walk toe, scrunching my toes so they don't look like they're hanging. If they're a closed toe, then you're good. But yeah. if they're open toe, you're just asking for me to talk shit. It, it's not cool. It's not okay. There's nothing okay about that. 
It's not okay. Oh my gosh, have you seen that meme of this girl that has like, I don't know, does she have sandals on or heels on? Uh, and Jazzy? And then there's a meme with a girl and she has a really long toenails. Mm -hmm. They're literally like manicured. I'm sure I've seen it. Have you guys seen it? No. Uh, it's just it's just like when you're that didn't your need girl, to say shit. That when was your girl's right toes are like <laughs> acrylics. <laughs> It was just, it was, I don't know. I just thought um, that was hilarious. So that would be one of the first things. Also, okay. uh, having manicure, pedicures. I'm, I don't judge if you need fills, but I do notice. Right. So I'm not saying like it's, it, I'm going to throw you off the building for that, but I do notice. It, yeah. I notice if you need fills. We notice. We notice it. Well. Thank you. Freshly manicured and done. They're clean. Ding, ding, ding. They're clean. Not hoish at all. <laughs> well. Just manicured, but no, it's true. Like literally, especially because now that I have natural nails, yeah, these these crack. Like fake nails, like you could wear them for a month straight and just need some fill and you're yeah. fine. But my stuff be cracking all the time and they're high maintenance. Um, it, okay, so we have is, number one. He has no, set, no ugly okay. shoes. So number one, no ugly we shoes. got no ugly shoes, ladies. Yeah. And it's not about it doesn't have. They can be cheap. We mean this no, um, tons of cute cheap high heels. Just make sure they're clean. Uh, they're not scraped up. You're not missing half of a heel. Like I don't want to hear click on one heel and clack on the other heel. That's <laughs> click clack. Click, yeah, clack. because that means click, your clack. shit is fucked up. Yes, definitely. Um, and then number two, he's talking about manicured nails. He likes his nails manicured. Yeah, they don't have to be long and super done. They just have to look appropriate. Just, yeah, it just doesn't That's look all. like like in the last three months you yeah. haven't. Don't look like an oil derrick worker. <laughs> <laughs> like your shit should look cool. You know what I mean? Like, okay, so question. Okay, so here's the question. Uh, In regards to that. Now, does a girl having zero nail polish? I, or do you like them to be nail I prefer polished? nails to be done, but it's not a prerequisite. I, it's, not a, it's not a deal breaker. Okay. It doesn't have to be. Because, because I, I feel know, like natural nails, you can see the dirt. Underneath well, them. yeah, but I also know a lot of a lot of women that are uh, athletically inclined mm -hmm. and they work out a lot, and so sometimes they can't have like a, like long manicured nails or excessively you know treated nails because they get scraped up and they break and stuff like that. Right. So I get that part. Okay. You know, so I, I that's not I said, that I would know anything about. The, <laughs> that's why I said you, you, you have latitude with me on that. You know. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Hair. 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 Wow. I don't think I've ever, this is, this is going to be new to me. I don't think I've ever heard a guy say. Well, see, here's the deal with hair. Well, it's, other than it was short. I've heard that a lot. I'm men cool. hate, most I'm, men I know do not like short hair. No, I dated a girl that actually shaved her head. Yeah, I'm cool with that. I'm, I'm fine with any, whatever your style is, is fine. Just right. make sure that it looks proper. Like so, you could rock it. Could this, um, there's, can we not agree? There's some girls that could rock the no shave look and they're just flawless and then there's just yeah. some that it's, it's just it's not more about really the girls that have sure. it's more about the girls that have shitty extensions or they didn't pay uh, their hair lady oh, enough geez. or they didn't have enough money for the whole set right so they just got the lower <laughs> level done like a, Wait, like a, a the third fact world country that you building even know this ladies this that's why you have it. to be insulted. The fact that he even knows you have tracks in your hair and that you only had enough money for the lower track. But okay, but that's rock your but natural that's an hair adult then. performer <laughs> thing because whenever we, at, well, me, whenever I touch a girl's hair on set for the first time, I'm like, hey, girl, I'm just checking to see how far back I got to pull from. Because <laughs> if your shit is up here, then I got to hold you <laughs> from not. here. And that could be a bit of an issue, so I just need to know if I'm going to be giving you some tracks back wait, in doggy. Wait, wait, No joke. I've literally been on set before yeah. when, like, my tracks were, like, I just came back a month from, like, Asia somewhere. Yeah. And they're hanging. I didn't have time to go to my nail lady and be, tell the guy, like, please do me a favor. Only grab from the top. Don't grab from the bottom. It's a legit it's thing track. for me. I go so. flying off during this Yeah, scene. just like we could be in an awkward position. I'd be like, um, this is yours. <laughs> I found it. It was on the floor. Imagine the cut uh, on that. <laughs> but some girls, you can see that, like, you just yeah. just don't even go that route if you're not going to do the whole thing. Right. Just rock natural or whatever. And you know, and just because I know guys don't know, but what happens is a lot of girls, especially blows up girls that go blonde. Oh, yeah, it really messes up their it hair. It fries the hell out yeah. of their hair. Yep. And Looks they're like left straw. with these little, like, one-inch fried-looking... Um, 
It looks like straw. Straw, yeah. It and looks terrible. Then they try to put extensions in, and they put these extensions like in. Like nobody can see. And then all you see is these lines across. And then, and then, the, you and see then like, the roots aren't done. Like one inch of hair, like trying to cover each one. And now, if she moves the wrong way, the whole thing flies out. Now, right. I'm, that doesn't mean that, you know, your hair needs to be all like, you know, the Brazilian blowout and everything. I like hair pulled back, slicked back. I like to see pretty faces. So, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm cool with all that. The natural look, too. On that note, can we give my hair lady, um, Daisy, Miss Daisy? Daisy did bomb. <gasps> Daisy always does good stuff, though. <sighs> she just killed this. And uh, she did my hair, like, this morning. So all day I was like, don't move. <laughs> don't that that move, has, like, a little move. bit of, like, a 50s feel to it. Y yeah. Well, what, what they like call a, rock, a bouffant. A rock of, ask, like, a little rockabilly kind I think of it's looking. called a bouffant. Bouffant, yes. Oh, actually, our last that, that one, we bump. did a really good one. We did the whole area reenactment of the Priscilla Presley mm. bump with all the curls. <sighs> And see, that's why I said, like, I this that. conversation isn't necessarily fair because I don't think a lot of guys, normal guys, pay attention to those things. But right. just because I'm around a lot of females all the time, being a performer, I think a lot of male performers notice. Well, maybe not a lot, but some They do. Notice. Yeah, the little things. Yeah, we see. Well, because you have, the, you have um, the set designer, you have we see. the director, we you, see you have the you. assistant. Everyone's like, oh, shit, fix her bra. Oh, shit, fix her hair. Oh, we, my God, look at her. We <laughs> see you. Her shoes dirty. Her feet are dirty. God. Dirty feet. That drives me. Ah, uh, that's okay. So another thing to turn off. <laughs> Listen, because it's back to the shoe thing. I can't let go of the shoe thing. <laughs> Look, if you go out with your girlfriends, guy friends, non friends, whatever, keep your fucking shoes on. Just listen, you left the house with them on, stay with them on. Do not carry them in your hands as you walk down the concrete driveway. Stop. I don't care that it's two o'clock in the morning. You don't see us taking our damn <laughs> shoes off, walking with them. No, because we made a commitment to the shoe when we left the house. So you make the same damn commitment to your choice. You ride it out. If they hurt, fuck it. That's what it is. They hurt. Okay. Hurt at least till you it's, get in the car. It's, it's like anal. Oh, wait. Can't, I can't, say that, I can't go there. See who slipped up? Not me. That's who slipped up. Not me. Not me. You know, nope. because I get anal how my shoes are organized. As an anal retentive. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, and when yeah. my shoes aren't, you know, that's organized, a, I get a OCD. in the end zone. And I get anxiety. Ah, so I'm ah. anal about how they're organized. Hot potato, hot potato. <laughs> okay, you guys. Remember after this, we're having an after, <laughs> an after hours conversation where we're just going to go deep into some really fun conversations. So we're YouTube Live, so everything's very PG. Another turnoff is stupidity. Now, stupidity is relative. Okay. Okay, what I mean by that is if you can't have an intelligent conversation with me, I'm not going to want to talk to you because I'm going to realize you're dumb. Okay, so question number That's a very that. judgmental thing to say, but it's what oh, I think. No. So this is my, this, not, it's not a question. So this is um, distinctions. How do we distinct? Because I, just because obviously we're in the okay. same industry. Some people are educated. Some people aren't. Yes. And... Okay. Honestly, women who aren't street smart or aren't educated have zero idea I'll, that they are I'll give you a for not instance. intelligent. For instance, is this. When I first met you, I don't even know if you remember, you used to do this all the time. But <laughs> oh, no, 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 it's not a bad thing. It's, it's, is not it, a bad it's thing. like, rest stop if I don't like this. <laughs> Am I hella telling right now? About to tell some stuff. Um, we would be talking. And I would bring up a conversation, whatever it was. And if you didn't know what I was talking about, you would say, I don't know what you're talking about. Or I don't know what that word is. Tell me, explain to me Always. what that word is. I do. That's I do really that. smart. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that because I'm like, oh, she's acknowledging that she needs, wants to know something and she wants to learn it. Whatever, uses, how ridiculous it is. He uses big words. <laughs> Sometimes. I'd be learned good. No, he, um, he, he really uses really big words. And I'd be like... Okay, and, and honestly, like the number one thing I was taught through just school period and life coaching yeah. is, if you don't know something, ask. I appreciated it. So, because, I, so he says stuff, and he's, yeah. he, he's very intelligent. He says big words, and I'll be like, I'll get the whole conversation, then he'll be like, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, and I'm like, okay, what did yeah. that mean? And then he'll sit with me and discuss it. I'm like, oh shit, I never yeah. heard that word. I and then appreciate guess what? that. Make a little note of it, and all week on Twitter, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> so guess what, I, you know? <laughs> I use the word always. And I appreciate that. Yeah. And that's not what I mean by stupid. I mean the girl who sits there and tries to pretend that she understands exactly what you're talking about. Right. And then you realize you have no idea what you're talking about, do you? Right. Because if I don't know something, I'll tell you. I'm sorry. It's above my pay grade. I, I don't know what you're talking about. 
but explain it to me so we can have a, a conversation about it. Okay, great. That was a good one. I'm going to use that one. <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, to have that kind of conversation, if I can't have an intelligent conversation with you about whatever it is, right, right, right. That's a, that's a big turnoff. I can't do it. Right. It's uh, because for me, I'm sapiosexual. That that that's okay, by the way, for YouTube standards. It's okay, a so here we term. go. Can somebody look up the definition of this word? I don't even know. Sapiosexual. That word it means that you're turned on or attracted to people with intelligence. Oh shit! Shut you're up. you're attracted to their sapiosexual. mindset. Sapiosexual. Yeah. Okay, everybody. Word of the week is sapiosexual. I want you guys to Twitter me. Well, here, so so here would here would be the setup. Sapiosexual, and how you would use that in a sentence? Have you ever met somebody that you were super attracted to, and they just kept talking like a dumbass, and you're like, I don't even want to have sex with this person anymore. Now, forget it, can because we you're at attracted him to their. On my Twitter, or can is we it get just one? For this? <laughs> is it just one? I feel like there might be a couple. Oh on no, your list. I think. No, <laughs> I think this is just three. That's probably a good three. Just three. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I, I think I think as older I get, well, you I'm a you lot value more, more seasoned yeah. in dating and and you value more than just like I mean the 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 midnight activities exactly. I mean that's what we come by from, the like, wayside. Okay, it nice. doesn't matter. You want to screw me? Can and you can you talk? That's yeah. that's a big deal. Can we sit through a whole dinner and have real yeah, conversation? Like, do you have dreams? Do you yeah. have goals? Do you have aspirations? Mm -hmm. You know, like, where do you see yourself in three years, five years, ten years? Like, I don't like women with dirty cars either. <laughs> what? I'm going to that... be nice to somebody in the room. Just high five. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who has, who has a not, is that you? Is it? <laughs> I can do, because sometimes I don't have time to wash my car either. Fair enough. But... I, I, drink, I know. I, I, was, I was just joking with them. Yeah. There's a difference between a dirty car yeah. and a messy car. Yeah. If, a dirty car is like if I've been out of town for two or sure, three sure. weeks and there's dust and maybe my gym shoes or thing. I'm talking about like, so my example, I, and I tell my girlfriends this, if your whole entire closet is in your back seat and you don't, yeah. can't even mix match, mix match your shoes. Like, that just lets me know you're already emotionally a wreck. If you can't even find your You should have some basic organization your in your car, yeah. Yeah. Now, no, it's I, one thing, if you're a construction worker or, you know, your production manager, or, you know, I understand that. It's, it's going to be that way. I think just every area of your life for me needs to be relatively well kept. Yes, thank you. That means, like, your home needs to be well kept. Mm -hmm. Your car needs to be well kept, you know, to a degree. I get it. People have to haul things and... You know, if okay. you have kids, so you have question, sports equipment. So question, question, question. This is personal. So when you go to his house, his shoes are perfectly organized and aligned. And he has a whole separate room for his shoes. And they're all organized. Well, now, so now, if now my a, daily shoes are, are in racks in the corner. And then my all the other shoes are in the garage. But I have a lot of shoes. So. I know. So the question is, huh. if you meet a girl... And her shoes are not as organized as you. Honestly, what is your first gut feeling? I, I notice. I, I, I'll notice. I'll notice. I'll notice. Because, because I, it's just it's something I pay attention to. Yeah, right. But I also know sometimes people are like moving or, you know, just getting settled. Or if they're traveling a lot. Like I know you travel a lot. You know, so right. you get certain latitude and leeway depending on what your lifestyle is. Right. But if you're settled and you're on your nine to five grind and your place looks like shit, yeah, <laughs> it's not gonna work. Okay, so, okay, so we're at um, shoes, car. Okay, so car. Mm -hmm. Your car being messy is a turn off. Ladies, listen to this. Clean your car. Okay, go ahead, next one. Uh, turn offs, turn offs, turn offs. Um, <sighs> You know what's a turnoff is is lack well, but this kind of goes across the board is somebody who who uh, lacks ambition, and I don't mean that you need to be on the mindset of like I'm going to be a multimillionaire. I just you need to enjoy what you do on a day to day basis because that drag it comes out when you speak to people, and if they don't like what they do for a living or that type of activity, then I can feel that. And as a man, as a okay, so yeah, so I'm coming from a woman's point of view, and mm -hmm. we've had this discussion so many times. Because women, we are always thinking, men are only looking at our body. Men no. only want us for one thing. No, that's where we start. Right. So 
do you, so men really do think about a girl's education or they think about a conversation or they think sure. about, oh, she has goals. Is that, does that really matter? Because yeah. sometimes like I'll be in a group of girls, you know, like, you know, a big group of girls be giving lunch and I could be with one girlfriend who she's smart, she's ambitious, she's a good person, she makes great money. And then her boyfriend ends up with some basic girl that's never had the job and she just stays home on the couch all day. And that's, that's that guy's insecurity. That's, yeah, they get insecure because... Please, please elaborate just because this is a conversation that ha- has come up a lot with oh, my girlfriends. Well, okay, so uh, there are some... You, this, this, this podcast specifically is yeah. geared for women. There are some men who are uh, obsessively and insanely insecure of a woman who might be doing better than them. And I don't necessarily mean financially, um, although that's part of it. If, if their career is moving more efficiently than then the latter's career is moving, then sometimes they can feel some type of way about it and get in their feelings right, right, like, right. oh, well, she's not better than me. You know, why is she moving, you know, and more comfortable with what she's doing than I am? I work hard. Uh, things along those lines. Sometimes men just get intimidated so by that. So men really think that? Absolutely. Really? Why would you think they don't? Honestly, Eggs. my experience is... Yeah. Well, of course we do. <laughs> As men, I, know, I mean, I just, this Listen, is my experience. You dated both ends of the spectrum. You've Correct. dated guys who are on the come up, and you've dated guys who have already made it. Correct. And what's the difference between the two? The guys that have already made it, their jealousy or insecurities are in a very different place. The guy who's on his come up trying mm-hmm. to match what you're doing, his jealousies and insecurities are on the opposite end of the spectrum. Hmm. There was one you dated that you had to help him go on trips with you and travel and mm-hmm. shit like that, right? And that turned out some type of way because he couldn't keep up with what you were doing. So, okay. So, do you, <laughs> so, okay, so out of that situation, because mm-hmm. something as women, and mind yeah. you, I talk to my girls all the time about this. Yeah. So my take on a situation like that was, it ended bad because I started sleeping with people that he knew. Well, so I felt like... It ended before being, that ever happened. Being vengeful and being like, well, screw you. You, you know, vengeful? you made You made no, a guy. Yeah, I said you vengeful. That would never be you. <laughs> no. <laughs> ever. I'm never vengeful to another woman. I'm vengeful to the guy that... That's what I meant. Yeah. And I'm not vengeful. I just cut you off. Uh, um, uh, eh. Mm. Oh, oh, we're going to go into this. Mm. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> no, please, no. I, do, I want this experience. So my experience is, <laughs> is men are just as sensitive. Mm-hmm. So I feel, I think in certain situations, like I me mean, as much as uh, certain things I would like to say about that person is that person does work, but I felt the situation came where he has feelings hurt and people don't like to be dumped, right? So I feel like, and let alone the fact for you to move on to one of their friends, or someone they knew. I feel like it had nothing to do with his success. At that point, it was just being straight vengeful when you're sensitive uh, it, and hurt. It could be, but I, I would As say, opposed to somebody, I think... Or, or is that just insecurity still? I think it's all surrounded by insecurity. Right. But again, if you, to say that you're popular is being modest. Okay, You have a huge following... You see your numbers and stuff like that. And because we're all so, so, so social media oriented, it's really easy to look and go, oh, I wonder how important slash popular this girl is. Oh, look, the three million people important. That's right. pretty goddamn important. <laughs> and so certain people can feel some type of way about that, that it's very difficult to keep up. Really? The person that we both know that I dated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, was like, hey, come fly to New York with me and then go over to Dubai. And I'm like, girl, I got a business and a job. Like, you know what I mean? I got things to do. And I don't have $10,000 to go travel across the world with you. Right, right, right. It's not that I don't want to. I can't keep up with your lifestyle. You know what Mm. I mean? So rather than me being vindictive and be a dick about it, I just excuse myself. Right. Because I wasn't financially on that level to keep up with her. But some men don't respond that way. Some men take it personal. And then try to make it about her and what she was doing. Now, that girl in question was very successful. Extremely, And, and yeah. doing big things. Fuck and I'm yeah. like, hey, high five, baby. <laughs> because you legit have everything going positive oh, yeah. for you. 
I just can't ride with you because I'm not on that train. Right. I'm on a different track right now. Right. But some people feel intimidated by that. So instead of acknowledging the fact that we're just not at the same right. pass right now, they get pissed off and irritated and become slightly vengeful. And now it's about you. Well, fuck you. Well, you're not shit. You know what I mean? You ain't all that. You think because you're cute and have big tits. Like, you know right, what I mean? Right, right, now right. they go down this road because they're trying to pacify themselves and feel better. That like I, It's not that I'm worthless. She's not that cool either. So right. rather than acknowledge the success that this other person has, they try to downplay it so they can feel better about their position. This is so new to me. Because really? as women, like it's... Like it's, it's it's just this is why I'm so excited to have the podcast and I love having men on because as women like we truly we sit at dinner we sit all night FaceTiming yes I know like dissecting like well why did he act like this and why did this happen da da da, da. and you gave me a whole different perspective because you know what happens is yeah. I, I obviously like you know I have a pretty big name on social media and you know I make you know a shitload yeah. of money but at the end of the day. 10 minutes. And so at the end of the day, though, when I, I look in the mirror, it's like, oh, it's Deanne. When my daughter looks at me, oh, my mom. Mm -hmm. When, you know, you, my friends look like at me, it's Deanne. It's like, like, we all have a very personal, intimate relationship that social media has nothing to do with. Sure, so I absolutely. always forget. So with yeah. the, you, the fact that you mentioned that right now, it gave me a different perspective. I forget. Well, I, I forget. I think we had this conversation recently. This whole week's theme was... Mm -hmm. I mean, this whole, like, people constantly using me or people constantly taking advantage of um, things, you know what I mean? That. And so I'm really coming to terms with... But don't like, we all do that? I mean, don't we all? That, that's why we develop relationships with people, not purely for, for personal motives, right? Right. But I know who I know. My claim to fame for me is there's nothing I can't get done in this city. I know... Everybody, yes, something do. for something. Everywhere. You know, if you're like, I and, need. Wait, yeah. anytime I need anything, no kidding, anything, I call him, boom, 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 boom. And literally, that person will text me back in 30 seconds the minute I say your name. Uh, but it's, and in it's, LA, like, yeah, it's hard well, to We do. can all say, like, in LA, like, people don't, people are so flaky but out But that's there. because if you spend time building relationships with people, then when you want to lean on them because they're able to lean on you, mm. they can do that. You know what I mean? So I think every relationship is slightly um, right. personally motivated. Not what can you do for me, but like, oh, you do X, Y, and Z. Mm. So I know people who also do X, Y, and Z. Maybe you guys can do some business together at some point right. in time. And I'll introduce you to them just because I think you guys can do something together. Right. And then in turn, when I reach out to you, you know what I mean? And, and that's how I pride myself on the relationships that I build. Right. But, but I don't ever, while I don't think that it's a personal thing, like how can I get a come up off this person? I do think that all relationships are, are uh, a, a symbiotic activity where we kind of feed off each other at one point in time right. or another. You know what I mean? Um, all the stuff that we've shot together over the years, it's you shoot with me because of our relationship and our acquaintanceship over the right. years. You know, you trust me. It's easy. You don't have to worry about and I anything. And shoot with two people. That's it. Right. Yeah. And in amazing, return, yeah. I also know what I'm getting into. I know I can trust you on the back end. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so we have this give and take. But all you relationships are You know, I'm not going to show like up and flatten your tires. That too. Anymore. And, yeah, <laughs> anymore. You flatten a lot more than a tire. Um <laughs> <laughs> a conversation for a different show. Um, okay, you guys, don't forget, we're about to wrap up because YouTube Live is only like 45 minutes, an hour at the most. And right now, we are going to go straight to Patreon in a few minutes. And that's where we're going to really get into some gossip, <laughs> some adult conversations. We're going to yes. have to be 18 and over. Yes. And it's going to be the gossip of all gossip. And we're being super PG right now. We're, yeah. we're both like... <laughs> <laughs> so Jazz, you have to leave the room. So oh. Jasmine. <laughs> You're a child, please. My daughter needs to put her earmuffs on, even though she's 25. <laughs> <laughs> she can't be 25 already. Oh, my God. Oh, it's crazy. No, but she's still five years old. I remember picking like, her up from her, from her job. Oh, I'm in and out. Mia, do you remember that? Yeah. How can I forget? And you know what? Can I tell you this? Her work ethic, she showed up... 30 minutes early every single time to her shift. She's always a hard worker. And I remember that. Yeah. Do you remember that, Jazzy? Um, 
I don't think you remember that. <laughs> okay, so um, real quick, how many minutes do we have left? Okay, so let's finish up um, things that turn men off. Let's go through it. What else turns you off about women? I'm, I'm trying to keep that stuff PG too, right? So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're going to go into um, the behind the bedroom stuff, ladies. We, we, we can scratch the right surface. Now, you know okay. what I hate? I can't stand women that can't kiss. And I'm sure that that's universal. Wait. Okay, so that's just, I just thought that was common fucking sense. <laughs> no, I think most women think they can kiss. And trying to swallow my whole damn face is not knowing how to kiss. And slobbering all over me is also not knowing how to kiss. St. <laughs> Bernard slobber all over everything. That's not what I'm interested in. And, and the ones that have the, the darting tongue. Now, this is, again, it's universal, right? It's not just a, like the girl or the person that, like a damn lizard? What the fuck is that? Do it again. Do it again. Go. Like, I, it, what's wrong with your tongue? Is it having a seizure? I don't know what the hell that is. Like, it's just wrong. Like, ease up. We'll get to it. Just... Take them. You okay? Don't die. We still got Patreon after this. I know. <laughs> you guys, this conversation is going to get a lot heavier and deeper on my Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> I, but it's, I, and the fun part is what I don't think, I don't, did we mention? What? We used to date. <laughs> yeah, and, it's not obvious by now. <laughs> and he's actually the pool guy. The, the pizza painter guy, guy. The painter. Um... The guy at the grocery store. The Harley store. Davidson guy. Can I the tell Harley you guy. how many times I get asked for that scene? I oh, told you that was going to be a good gosh. scene. Okay, so that part, we're going to keep that part for Patreon. So let's stick to yeah. the topic. Because we're going to, yeah. that, that's what's Turn offs. Fun. People who Turn can't offs. kiss. Well, in my case, okay. obviously, women who can't kiss. No, um, same thing for women. We've yeah, talked I'm about sure. Thing. I'm yes. sure of that. Okay. I'm sure of that. Um, and again, this is people, but for me, being a man, women who don't know how to behave in public. Okay, let's get specific about that. I've had this conversation before. Uh, women, listen. Just like... Mannerisms. Re realize where we're at. If we're having some sort of discord, acknowledge that fact. We can talk about it in private, right? Oh. We don't need to have this fallout in the middle of public. It's not anybody else's business what the problem is. Ease up. Relax. Take a breath. I promise you that dude's going to be apologizing at some point in time just to shut you up. So be right. easy in public because it's super embarrassing. And, and I know that goes both ways. You know, men fly off the handle too. Right, right, right. But when women do it, y'all get you know a pass. I think, I think, I don't know. I mean, can we like Google the percentage of this? I find, I mean, men are less likely in public to fly off the handle before women does. Well, yeah, because we'll end up in jail. <laughs> I wish that was funny. You know what? It's that not. Is true. It's, yeah. it's a dead ass fact. That's true. But women get this carte blanche thing that they can do whatever they want to do in public and they don't care because they're a female and they can get away with it. Right. And that's pretty true. It's sad, but it's true. It so is true, if yeah. a woman doesn't know how to behave in public for me, I'm, yeah, we're done. Like, okay. I can't, I can't do it. It's not going to okay, happen. Okay, so how about the guys that do date women and they act like asses in public, but they stay with them? They stay with them? Yeah. Because, well, there's a, a host of reasons, but I think one of the biggest reasons is because um, they're probably above their pay grade and they know it. <laughs> and so they take that bullshit because they're like, this is the hottest girl Damn. I've ever dated in my life. He's dropping and, some jewels here. Dropping some and, jewels. And, 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 and I can't. Gems. Yeah. Gems, jewels. Jewels, same damn now thing. Now my daughter has me all insecure about <laughs> using millennial words and like our old school, like is, is, the is, Brady is, Bunch words. Is, is, is jewels now PC? <laughs> You're not going to piss anybody off? <laughs> I'm, I'm just making jokes. I'm just making jokes. Now. I'm just making jokes. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I guess acting in public, you know what, um, there's something like I, I truly believe about that and we've had this conversation before and, and I think that has to do with, okay, we're going to wrap this up right now. Uh, that, 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 that has to do with, um, generational, I don't know if it's generation or generational upbringing because I've had this conversation before with my ex-husband, right? And my new, what, he's almost 50, something that's around there. God, he's, I know he's going to be pissed, whatever, whatever. Um, obviously, he, you know, he dates much younger girls. And he goes on, he dates and he enjoys himself. He's single. And we're good friends. And we were married you know, off and on for 12 years. And he always says something. And even to this day, even, even every single guy I've ever dated, like, you will never move with me in public and have me disrespect you. 
Like I was being lady, always be classy. But we're at, we're in the strip club and we're getting crazy in the back room with the That's stripper. Different. That's One okay. thing, but you know, we're in public and you know, we're on a date and we're at a bar and you leave and a guy walks up to me. So he walks up to him and be like, I'm here with my man, please walk away. You know, like, boom, back to you. What's he gonna do? Walk away. And then there's girls that are like, oh, hi, what, my name is so-and-so. Why? Because they want the guy who's gonna come out of the bathroom to be like, oh, she has options. Oh, she's desired. Oh, I'm gonna chase her. That's gonna make her feel cool. <clears throat> so we, we had a conversation recently where he was saying that, he's like, I date these millennials, right? And he's like, I'll come, you know, I'll come out of the bathroom from a bar and she'll be at the bar with five guys on her. He's like, I'll walk all the way to the bar, order myself a drink and I'll drink it. And he's like, I ain't stressing. He's like, and she'll come over and be like, oh, you didn't save me, damsel in distress, drama queen. And he'll be like, from what? And she'll be like, well, the guys are harassing me. He's like, honey. <laughs> right, he Cute. knows better. He knows better. My ex-wife shits all over you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like she's just spirit. Never once in twelve years did I ever come out, and was there ever a man standing next to her? Mm -hmm. So he goes, either you know how to act or you don't. Right, it's a big deal. Yeah. So turn off, ladies. Let's think. Okay. So first, let's plug in your company. So me and I, Derek and I, have talked. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be doing a training and seminar for women on how to unleash your sexy beyond the bedroom. And Derek, who we've worked together numerous times in the industry, he's an mm -hmm. adult entertainer. So am I. And you know, I'm writing my book. He's already written books and courses. And his are geared, geared toward men. Mm -hmm. And we're going to come together and put a workshop where he's going to take the husbands <laughs> and the men, or even single men. Look at me. <laughs> and this hey, men and meet with them and speak with them about what we like, what we desire, how to turn us on, you know, just how to be masculine, alpha, and I get to take you women in the room, teach you how to be feminine, how to, you know, get it on the bedroom, have a good time. Um, I'm super excited that I'm, yeah. actually I'm privileged and honored that you're able to come. Oh, thank, you. thank you so much. Of course. And um, please plug in all your social media and how they can get a hold of you. Uh, it's really simple, Derek Pierce on Instagram and at the D Pierce on Twitter. Okay. Simple. And, is that on the page right now? So screenshot this, ladies. Oh, it's men. I'm sorry. Which Shit, ladies, ladies as well. <laughs> you can slide in them DMs too. <laughs> do you have an OnlyFans yet? I do. I have OnlyFans and AVN stars. Because I did not see your OnlyFans link. I was stalking yeah, you I, earlier. I know. It's because we're uploading all the stuff now, but my AVN stars account is active. Okay, well, I'm going to totally happy with your, with your OnlyFans account. We about to, <laughs> we can be out to eat. Rich, rich. Okay. Um, so do me a favor. Make sure you guys follow him. He's hilarious. He's a great person and honestly, genuinely Thank you. a real one. And that doesn't come from my mouth very often about any men, oh. especially the ones I've dated. Stop it. Please, stop <laughs> it. Stop <laughs> it. Stop it. Okay. So right now we're going to take a quick five, ten minute break. We're going to reset. And we are going to do an after hours where we're yeah. going to go really deep into... No pun intended. Intimacy <laughs> relationships. And uh, what really turns men off in the bedroom, behind closed doors, and, you know, maybe some of our own experiences together. So make sure you go to my Patreon. We're going to put the link up right now. And make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Is that or no? <laughs> do we do that for YouTube <laughs> Give it a thumbs up or, or like it or put okay, a heart okay. on it. Or... Go to Patreon right now. We'll see you soon. Love you guys.